today higher education is really reaching the pinnacle of challenges and opportunities in view of the fact that there are several revolutions that have been taking place in the annals of development of higher education it has also resulted in revolutions in the industrial development that is how education 10 has now come to education 50 which has also subsequently led to industry 502 it is in that appropriate context the national education policy 2020 has been approved by the government of india and it has been implemented in our country when anything new comes it is always possible that we have to envisage both opportunities and challenges i will take you through the various opportunities that this national education policy has put before the people of this country and the future citizens of this country as well as if there are any challenges in the implementation related issues the national education policy implementation has already been declared to have completed one year prime minister sri narendra modi ji has also launched as a mark of this one year completion a regulation a path breaking regulation called academic bank of credit we will look into it later the phenomenal kind of output or outcome pillars of the national education policy 2020 is a paradigm shift from what has been teaching focused has now become learning plus relearning and lifelong learning focus the stage of rigidity has gone in for flexibility working in silos has transformed into holistic and multidisciplinary making students as users of knowledge has resulted in creators of knowledge again producing job seekers is being replaced by job providers and job promoters this is what is being expected to be the outcome pillars of nep 2020 the document itself has got several sections i will not be going into the details except to share with you some of the salient aspects of the opportunities that has been created by this particular policy and then we will take up in the second part of it what could be the implementation related issues that we have to look at in order to improve the quantum jump of quality in universities and colleges the key changes that have been brought about is to have large multidisciplinary universities and colleges with at least one in every district more multidisciplinary undergraduate education autonomy for the teachers and the institution revamping curriculum pedagogy assessment and student support a lot of faith on the integrity of the faculty and institutional leadership positions trying to promote high quality research through national research foundation providing more of independency to the governance of the higher education institution with highly qualified people and boards bringing a proper regulatory board a single regulator so that there is no mutual conflict of laws rules regulations ordinances etc and also to increase access equity and inclusion through various measures including open schooling online education etc so what is the institutional restructuring and constitution consolidation as i told you the aim is to transform them into large multidisciplinary universities and by saying so there will be an evolution of research intensive universities 
and teaching intensive universities and autonomous colleges which are degree granting by saying so there will be universities which will be concentrating more on research and less on teaching there will be universities which will be concentrating more on teaching and less of research and the autonomous colleges will become grant, degree granting colleges by themselves without really depending upon any universities by way of it it is felt that the affiliated college system in about 15 years it will be gradually phased out into the uh, autonomous degree granting colleges the accreditation system will also become different with relevant norms for the three different categories of the higher education institutions and these are the kind of concepts that have been put forth in the policy guide the most important hallmark achievement that is envisaged is to increase the gross enrollment ratio in higher education in the country by 2035 to 50% today it is about 21.1% as a national average even though there are variations between the various states in india where tamil nadu has already crossed 50% and there are places where the gross enrollment ratio is lingering around 10 to 15% also so this is the major target that has been done the other one is there has been so much of con confusion and contradictions among the the terminology structuring and functioning of the universities there are universities which are central universities state universities affiliating universities deemed to be universities private universities etc etc and this particular nep projects that all of them will be called as universities under one category because they they are expected to become multidisciplinary in nature so by doing that how do you make it as a more holistic higher education this is where the multidisciplinary education with flexibility has been brought in with multiple entry and exit the student can decide what level he or she would like to continue and what degree they would like to take is left to the student's desire and aptitude by introducing a 3 year or 4 year undergraduate program or they can also go out with a certificate or diploma and then come back as and when they need to complete and take the degree so that kind of a model has also been done and as a great decision that for the research degree mphil has been discontinued because it is not happening to be useful in terms of their employability so in order to facilitate all this a national level credit transfer system has been envisaged and the academic bank of credits has been brought in and the regulation has already been notified i had been having the unique privilege of being one of the member of this particular committee which launched this regulation on academic bank of credit there is also planned that a model multidisciplinary education and research university will be established in every uh, district so that it will work as a model for other universities either to expand or to merge the various uh, uh, components of that so that they become multidisciplinary institutions so this way when they are wanting to do this as a multidisciplinary higher education there are also certain other aspects which have been envisaged in this policy that is bringing together vocational education with regular education all of us have experienced that vocational education has been used as a separate stream today it is coming to the main framework of higher education where a student in the regular education 
can parallelly take vocational education while going through the degree program undergraduate or so value education will become an integral component in all the curricula in addition to inculcate the native expertise to the student lok vidyas will be brought in so that there are traditional experts who are there in the community they will be provide an opportunity to teach students and the skill education component will be reframed so that they have a hands on experience it could be internships or incubation centers through which the skill education can be done while it is the kind of the national a kind of effort it is also required that the students are provided a global citizenship education which will be in tune with the sustainable development goal 4 of unesco and that is how students will get glo globalized in nature and further it will also be inferred that indian classical languages etc would also be brought in bringing in technology into them and put functionalizing the e education in all this so you would understand there is a wide array of opportunities that have been put forth and not every institution will have capability to do all these kinds of divergent capacity building and knowledge providing opportunities and hence it was felt that there has to be certain reforms which will put in together an opportunity for the students to have extreme flexibility and a student friendly kind of a methodology by which a student will be able to take courses from any institution across the country and put it into their own academic career account like everybody having a financial account there will be an academic bank account for each of the student who registers with this particular bank and he or she when she is going to do a course while studying in the parent institution up to 40% of the total courses the student can take from different institutions by registering into this bank account and their courses when evaluated and they gain the credits that will be deposited into the academic bank as well as the parent institution which will be transferred to the respective universities while awarding the degree this is the concept of this academic bank of credits which has been operationalized already so this academic bank of credit what i have just now explained is what it means in principle of multiple entry multiple exit and also any time learning anywhere learning and any level of learning can be facilitated by for the students suppose if a student wants to do a particular program which is very special for the country they can reach out to that university whether it is in the north or east or west or anywhere and they will be able to become eligible for taking a course from there whether it is three credit course or four credit course or two credit course but it is getting accounted and the validity of that will be up to a period of 7 years all these details are given in the regulations thus the academic bank of credit is an academic service provider as a digital virtual online entity established and managed by the ministry of education and ugc to facilitate all students of the specified higher education institution to become its academic account holders to allow distributed learning systems by creating a seamless student mobility within inter and intra university system through a formal system of credit recognition credit accumulation credit transfers and credit redemption the one point that all of us have to remember is in order to become members of the academic bank of credit in any higher education institution Which has got NAC A A grade 
alone will be able to become members of the academic bank of credit so that quality of the courses to which the students are able to opt for will be maintained the next aspect of it is to create optimal learning environment and support for students how do we do that every institution has been asked to prepare academic plans as a major component called institutional development plan and to be monitored by the board of governors instead of having say various types of governing council syndicate etc now it is being brought in as board of governors and they will be taking care of all the curricular and other related components and most importantly they will rely mostly from the feedback and needs of the students and that will be taken up by the decision making bodies how do we really bring in global citizens of education into nep 2020 that has also been thought about to see that cognitive domains of learning domains of learning socio emotional domains of learning behavioral domains all were brought in through what is called as outcome based education in today's higher education institution thanks to national assessment and accreditation council and the other regulatory bodies like aicte now today even the medical council has brought in the concept of outcome based education and that kind of a model is to be introduced in all streams of higher education so that the students will be able to get cognitive abilities socio emotional balance abilities and also behavioral reformation so the there are several recommendation that has been given by nep 2020 on the global citizens of education how it should align with the concepts of global uh, qualities to be obtained with them and this will be provided to them by the students abilities to have vocational education parallelly along with the general education and also they will be brought in together to see that the candidates who do bo degree programs will become part of the four year multi disciplinary bachelor program and all that as i have already told you all the technological and other related potentials will be provided for for the students so in order to facilitate it there has been several provisions that are given in nep 2020 faculty and institutional autonomy there has been always a criticism that the rigid kind of governance system does not give freedom and autonomy to the institutions and the faculty and that is being looked into for the students financial support through a national scholarship portal has been ex extended so that socio economically disadvantaged student support is being given in addition to creativity in curricular framework etc for the teachers a special program has also been in this age called the professional academic training and capacity building of teachers called as leap program in fact the niti program can be considered as one of the professional academic training and capacity building programs and the other uh, there are several other programs like how to develop the leadership leadership is also equally important if you have to implement a various reforms in the way that it is expected to be implemented so there is a program called karma which will bring in the kind of a training and others that are required there will be a transparency in recruitment and tenure track appointments there will be a performance linked incentive to be there and all the technological advances in open and distant learning will be brought in with the Uh, availability of moocs so thus if you see you will have internationalization of education 
integration of vocational teacher and professional education, setting up of new quality higher education, as I told you, the standalone higher education institutions like professional education institutions will evolve into multidisciplinary higher education. And then special educational zones will be there. There will be also national educational technology forum to facilitate all these innovation to take place. Teacher education has been also looked into very carefully to see that the various types of one-year degree, two-year degree, everything will be transformed into four-year integrated BA program with a minimum degree qualification for teaching. That is being brought in. And finally, the teacher education will gradually be moved by 2030 into the multidisciplinary colleges and universities has been another reform that has been looked at. Well, all these are looking into the various progress in the educational sector, setting up of a national research foundation, which a very high level of funding has also been put in as one of the recommendation. But in the main point of synergy that is being looked into is to bring in together research in arts, humanities, along with innovations in sciences, technology, and social sciences. There has been a feeling that research is always concentrated in science, technology only, and all the other disciplines, including languages, are not given that much of a priority. This disparity feeling will be completely removed by bringing them all together with an essential point that this synergy of these are very important for economic, intellectual, societal, environmental, and technological health and progress of a nation. So for which a greater investment in research has been thought of, and for that operational mechanism, the National Research Foundation is being envisaged. So competitive funding will be there, peer-reviewed grants will be there, and there will not be any differentiation between private and public higher education institution in processing the quality proposals. And it is also felt that the proposals with relevant participation of industry and government will look into as a priority kind of consideration will also be taken in. In this, to mentor a good research proposal developing mechanism, the national science academies, the national engineering academies, and other major societies, professional bodies, experts in these areas will act as mentors for the various institutions and state universities so that the quality proposals are generated, which will result in high quality deliverables as projected in the proposals. And it may also attract good funding. Technology interfacing is another very major area that has been um, uh, 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 is, is actually projected there with virtual labs, national educational technology program, and other areas of development. As you must be hearing, the online and digital education has become one of the major requirements today. Even though COVID-19 has devastated the country, in a way it has brought all the teaching experts and teachers together, and they themselves have transformed into the best kind of a, a digital teachers by using several kinds of gadgets whether it is through SWAM or, or NBTL or any other kind of thing. So structurally and functionally, they will be made much more stronger so that any student from any area of the country will be able to have a successful online education. The digital divide has been a major problem and to take care of it, the technological evolution has been coming. To have all these things done, effective governance and leadership of the higher education institution becomes important. When we say that there is going to be autonomy, it will be provided as a graded autonomy 
academic, administrative, financial to the higher education institution. And there will be independent board of governors for the institution. As I have told you, they have to develop an institutional development plan based upon which only all the grants from government of India will be provided to the various institutions. In order to streamline this process, there will be a single regulator for higher education in the country, and they will work on various aspects of the higher education system functioning. It is also said that they will increase the public investment in education to be 6% of the GDP at the earliest. As we all know, this is being talked about for a very, very long time, very many years, but still we have not crossed 3% even. So that is the situation, but it is projected optimistically that it will reach 6% GDP. So how does this whole scenario work governance system? The Higher Education Council of India will have a body called the National Higher Education Regulatory Authority, which will produce regulations which are light but tight, and that will also work with the BOG, Board of Governors of the Higher Education Institution, which will consist of only eminent experts and work on the basis of the institutional development plans. There will be a body, National Accreditation Authority or National Accreditation Council, wherein NAC, NBA, and all other new entities will come under that category. There will be a general education council which will bring in all the quality framework in the standard setting standards for higher education of different disciplines and for which, including professional education, there will be professional standard setting bodies which will work under the GEC so that the standards of higher education is kept on for. And there will be another body, Higher Education Grant Council, which will look into the funding and financing of higher education. That would be based on the outcome of the institutional development plan. That is what has been said. They have also given a system how it will be operated. We have a, a CAB organization now that will get replaced with this Rashiya Sikhya Ayog. And that will have a central body with the chairman being the Minister of Education and other members. All the details are there with representatives of the state governments, etc. At the state level, there will also be Rajya Siksha Ayo in each state where the state education minister will be the chairperson and the members will be ministers, stakeholders, eminent educationists, etc. This is what has been said to be the governance mechanism. Having said all this, we have to look at what could be the challenges. These are all the various opportunities. When you read this document, you really get elated that there has been so much of provision, so much of concern about the quality of higher education, the flexibility kind of provisions given to the students, and the richness in the curriculum and so on, and avenues that are given. Usually, when the policies are such that they are developed, they normally have to lead on to a planning document. Each chapter of it should have a detailed project report so that that will give an implementation kind of a document, stepwise methodologies and all that. And then you also require a strategy deployment, how you can reach out to any part of the country, our country being a great diverse country in terms of various kinds of circumstances, strategy becomes an important thing. The schemes which are developed into this particular policy need to be implemented and their quality will be monitored, whether they are really being uh, functionalized as per the required quality, their sustenance, and the enhancement of the quality. Then only you get the desired outcome and outputs. That is the general cycle where we always get into difficulty when he comes into the implementation stage 
up to the others it will go on very well only when you go into the field and start implementing there may be difficulties and we may have to see what are the difficulties these are the challenges in the implementation system first of all the implementation requires multiple action to be taken by multiple bodies at the center and the states the schools and the higher education institutions and so on while doing so there are three major areas of implementation has to be considered with top attention number 1 education is a concurrent subject wherein both the central government and the state government have got rights over it state government claim that they are the ones who have to decide any policy decision on education but central government has got a superiority power while you can put up whatever changes or modification is concerned by the state government the final approval need to be done only by the central government is the current situation so in order to avoid all this careful planning joint monitoring collaborative implementation between the center and the states are required the three language formula that is put across the country through the national education policy has not been received very well enthusiastically by all the states of this country and that is another major challenge which needs to be handled then suddenly saying that all the affiliated colleges will be abolished by 30 years uh, in the next 15 years or so is going to be extremely difficult because of the nature of the system that has evolved over 60 years now it becomes very difficult to the universities to sustain their existence itself without the affiliated colleges and the revenue generated through the affiliated colleges and so on when these are all the governance related issues there is also another major issues of resources you need human resources quality faculty you need infrastructural strengthening to the level of excellence that is being envisaged and also financial support for the universities and colleges across the country after having given all that there has to be a proper mechanism for monitoring careful analysis and review of the implementation steps so how are we going to really transform the universities into multidisciplinary universities all of us know today we have unidisciplinary universities in plenty medical veterinary engineering and uh, agriculture fisheries music and so on and so forth so how are we going to transform them into multidisciplinary universities if we have to do any of the changes proper amendments in the acts and statutes of the different type of universities are required so how is it going to be enacted is it going to be a common act across the country so that it will be adopted by all the universities is another issue acceptability of integrating vocational education with formal education and even the highly talked about credit transfer system and credit acceptability system how much it is going to be systematically implemented is also a challenge and it is it's only time to tell us how successful this particular academic bank of credit system will be there So there are so many i can put in like this creation of infrastructure and technology ecosystem what could be the model or pattern of the institutional development plan there are at least up to 30 to 50% of the teacher vacancies are there in higher education institutions across the country not being able to fill up even in the central universities very recently there is an announcement that all the vacancies will have to be filled up in central universities in two months so these are the situation that are happening on the other hand faculty performance itself is a questionable kind of an issue today to suit the demands of the standards of higher education and that is to be also looked into so the digital divide which i have already said and the scholarship pattern required so taking into consideration 
the ministry of education has developed one implementation plan it is available on the website of uh, the ministry of education it is called as satek and that kind of a system primarily school education has been looked at and the higher education has also been taken up but however a solid kind of a methodology has not taken place in this context the association of indian universities of our country has taken it up to see how you will be able to bring in an implementation methodology the president of the aau dr g thiruvasagam and the secretary general dr pankaj mittal have constituted a committee and uh, i have been nominated as a chairman of the committee and we have eminent members in the committee dr kaliraj from bharathiyar university vice chancellor professor shushma yadav the member of the university grants commission professor suranjan das from jadavpur university dr rajan belukar from aro university gujarat dr c rajkumar from op jindal global university and professor s vaithi subramanian from sastra university of the committee we have already started working upon it and we thought we should try to have a cross sectional view from all the stakeholders possible so in our first meeting we said that we will provide them a document there is already several documents are there on the implementation of it the association of indian universities has also developed a book the ugc has got a document called eq document and several links all that will be sent to the vice chancellors of various universities the chairpersons and the vice chairpersons of the state higher education council cii pki ascom and other several societies with a well designed feedback pro forma and that has been developed and it will be sent along with that so that in about 2 to 3 weeks time we expect a cross sectional feedback from all the stakeholders and that will be taken up for consideration it is also some of the states have already adopted the nep 2020 like gujarat karnataka and haryana the committee will also look into the ways and means by which these governments are also trying to implement the nep 2020 that will also be taken up by this particular committee well considering the committee has been given three months time to provide a detailed report on the implementation action plan i will not go into the details of it except to tell you that this questionnaire that has been developed by me on behalf of the committee talks about all aspects of the implementation requirements i will just give one in, in, uh, detail so that the similar things you will be able to understand category a includes quality initiatives of universities and colleges it is as per the chapters of the, uh, the nep 2020 so we just try to ask them in a simple way so that the filling up becomes easier and it is going to be automated so that analysis also becomes much easier for us there will be questions with tick mark they have to do which are the following initiatives have been taken up by your institute university for developing ethical and moral values in students like participation of students in community service participation in religious and spiritual activities promotion of leadership programs among students diversity education disciplinary and judicial programs among students student self governance activities like student government clubs etc promotion of recreational activities other activities like student galleries conducting travel activities of students and others if there is anything specifically the institution would like to mention that can also be mentioned then in that another subdivision will be to develop better cognitive development of students for which about 10 different kind of uh, uh, probes have been put in for which answers will be expected by the feedback institution the third component of that uh, quality uh, category is what are the initiatives taken up by the institution for promoting access to socio economically disadvantaged group 
whether any pro to protected uh, uh, places or seats for the students to access, then out fee schemes, waiving the tuition fees, or providing bursaries, scholarships, etc. These are the kind of uh, questions that are being put in, which will show the real situation on the ground. Next one will be which of the following measures has been taken up by your institution for promoting teacher and institutional autonomy? What kind of autonomy currently the faculty are uh, enjoying, updating their curriculum? Are they able to do in the college? They have to depend upon the university as of now. Same way, the selection of the students for their courses then teaching strategies and methods, etc., etc. There has always been a column there we have provided to see the areas which are not already uh, picked up there and that can be provided by the institution, which may be the best practice of the institution also. Then category B looks at holistic and multidisciplinary education. These are the various uh, encouragement that is being given by the university to bring about high quality, multidisciplinary and holistic teaching across the various areas for which some pro questions have been designed. Category C talks about optimum learning environment and support for students like I ICT, like your infrastructure, like your knowledge systems or learning management system, etc. will be captured there in this particular category C under which there are other subdivisions also in terms of optimal support for students, whether the mentors, the opinion surveys, and how does the student parliament and student councils are working, how does the feedback system is operational, all that will be looked into under this. And category D is the motivated, energized, and capable faculty or teachers. So this is also being picked up how very much it is there, whether faculty strength is all right, whether faculty are empowered to design their own curricula, etc. all that is being picked up here. Category F is equity and inclusion in higher education, which talks about how, what are the ways by which the equity and inclusion issues are being looked at, is also looking into gender, looking into technology divide, and all the bridge courses, slow learners, advanced learners related issues, all that are being picked up here. Category G is teacher education through professional development of teachers. How it has been put into the system as a systematic and frequent kind of an effort to develop the professional expertise of the students is being picked up here. Category H is reimagining vocational education, because that is also one of the important components that has been put in. So we have to see how exactly it can be done, how they can be given internship for all students, including the underprivileged, economically weaker and girl students across the country is also being picked up there. Which are the following vocational programs are offered? Inside the university, they have listed a few, but we can institution can give their own list of programs also. Category I is catalyzing quality academic research. This, this is where a lot of inputs are required from the institutes so that it could be properly planned to promote inter and multi and transdisciplinary research in the university. Transforming the regulatory system of higher education is another one because it is said that uh, the regulatory system is to be transformed, whether that would be sustainable model. The institutions are supposed to develop institute development plans. How will it be operationalized? So these are issues that are taken into this format. Then effective governance and regulation. That is the most important requirement for an institution to go on because there are certain path-breaking reforms that have been suggested in terms of leadership position, in terms of board of governors, in terms of members of the board of governors, because today in many universities, you will see individual different type of components of the governance bodies. 
you will say political uh, uh, system representatives to be in the members bureaucrats will be number academicians will be far far lesser in number so in this system you have to transform to only eminent academic people into the board of governors how is it possible so has the higher education institution is able to amend the act statute regulations etc to facilitate implementation of national education policy 2020 with the necessary approvals of the appropriate governments unless the government is going to be really committed for these kind of governance forms it may not be possible for any higher education institution to operate and operationalize the governance reforms that are envisaged in the nep 2020 so with this new challenges we have to find new solutions it is inferred that the national education policy 2020 will become as a new solution for higher education it is important if we have to be successful in educational revolution 5.0 to suit the requirement of industry 5.0 these challenges have to be met by all the stakeholders of higher education more especially the institutional heads and the faculty members so that you will realize and enjoy the fruits of the reforms that are envisaged in the national education policy 2020 and ultimately our aim is to see that we are top in the globe our children are being brought to the forefront so that they lift up the standards of higher education globally thank you very much